Howdy. I thought I'd look back today at um, Futurama, the first list I ever did, the best Futurama episodes uh, back in the day. And because I've been watching a lot of Futurama lately, um, my internet uh, has been down, so I've had to just use my basic uh, phone internet connection. So to save space, I've just been looking at some old stuff lately and uh, yeah, just enjoying Futurama. And uh, yes, I feel quite a bit in style and the way editing is done and even my delivery has changed a lot since then um uh since i made this but uh you know it's nice to look back on and uh sort of uh geez i, I didn't even put that in widescreen <laughs> even clicking the widescreen. i think i actually made this in a different editor to i used uh, instead of premiere i used uh what was it um power director but, you know, and the nice thing, look, there was a black spot there. What the hell? Like, and a million people saw this. That's terrible. Oh, God, that's just terrible. Um, and, like, I was just on a tangent. I'm just going to be making fun of this because of all the mistakes I made in this. It's Like, I still agree with my choices, but, like, I made so many errors and mistakes in making this because it was my first time. Um, I mean, I did fan, fan dubs of animes before this for... A long time as you've seen uh but um yeah like this was the first time i actually tried to do a top list and ah oh, even the way it's sort of put together is this no nah, it, it's got good footage like the choices of footage i use are fine but um uh just the editing is so poor on a lot of it um and bringing up Neko Ramen? What? Like, what, what is that? Like, 20 years old? Like, you can barely find it on the internet anymore. It's four episodes of just... Uh, kinda, and I do like the cartoons, but it's just... It's nothing and not even remotely relevant to Futurama. <laughs> uh, Fry in the Slurm Factory is a really good episode. I could definitely have put this later on the list and not have batted an eyelid. Because, like, there's pretty much no lines I don't like of this. Um, it's recreating perfectly a, um, a story we've all seen a million times. Like, growing up, you know, we'd all watch Willy Wonka five to six times at least. I mean, the Willy Wonka kids actually still make a living off uh, going to conventions and stuff, which is lovely. Um, you know, and they all stick together as well as the uh, Oompa Loompa. Um, it's really quite beautiful, actually. But anyway, um... Yeah, every part of it was just beautiful. Like, it was interesting. It wasn't, like, mean-spirited or anything. It was just them all going out on a, uh, a story, on a uh, adventure together. Um, the the characters, I think, just makes for so, such a good team. Uh, Leela, Fry, and Bender, they just a really perfect team. Um, oh, look, there was no even a crossfade there. I'm just going to be making fun of this all the way through. Leela's Homeworld I watched last night again, and again, and I was like, ah, oh, this is still such a great episode. The ending part still makes me cry. And I'm like, wow, that that is really, really um strong emotional impact. And Bender, of course, is just being an ass the whole way through. Though I, you have to point out he does save um Leela's parents at the end by chucking Fry down the sewer. So um, you know, I guess he kind of redeems himself a little bit. And the parents are so lovely. I'm so glad they make them a part of the series later on. I mean, I, we could have done without them kind of seeing them bickering over their marriage, the uh, the two of them. I was okay with them actually being okay about being married, you know, um, and focusing more on their kid. But, uh, um, and I like all the mutants as well. Like, uh, all the mutants, uh, you could see yourself liking these characters and you say... And it's a great way to sort of um, push away prejudice because you've got these people who look like freaks, but they're wonderful people. And when you see the mutants, that's what comes through. And I just think, oh, geez, I, I, I can see why Fry would hang there around uh, in the sewers with Leela <laughs> rather than on the surface. And this is just such a beautiful part here. Um, this got copyright struck um, so fiercely when I, I probably would have never started my YouTube if I hadn't fought it and done my research, because I was like, nah, because I had gotten a whole 10,000 views on the video, which back then was a big deal to me. I was like, oh, I've got to, I've got to show um, a fox that, you know, I want to be able to express my views, but I wonder why they'd even care when it was at 10,000 views, but they did. Um, oh, I love this episode. Yeah, this is another one I really liked. 
You know, I guess that's the thing about Futurama, is that it brings back that um, fire in me. I just go, oh, I love this one. Because this one, again, was one I was just like, oh, it's so fun. Because um, I love the fact that this sort of talks about aging and everyone has a different... Um, interpretation of aging some say oh it's terrible oh no i've got to age blah 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 and others are just and you got Fran farnsworth who's like i like being old and i'm just like good on you farnsworth because it's just you know being alive your age it's not something to feel good or bad about it just is and you live based on your age and your physicality and who you are and just do the best you can with what you have and uh um, I love that she says, like, I'm proud to be an adult now, and, you know, there isn't this constant need, oh, I need to be young again, because that's kind of the first genie in the bottle wish people make. They say, I want to be 16 forever. I'm like, really? You want to be 16 when you had zits and no one would ever date you, and your, your brain isn't even fully developed till, like, you're 25 to 30? It's like, I probably could have done without including this episode. This is probably... The only one on the list I probably would have taken off um, in retrospect, and most people kind of agreed it wasn't the best choice. It was very colorful though, and I love the different art styles they did use. It's it's not a terrible choice, you know, um, but uh, there are certainly better choices in retrospect. Like, Fear of a Bot Planet, so much of season one I really liked, um, and I roommate as well, but I think that's already on the list. Um, this was almost kind of a filler one, but, uh, still, the visuals on this were exceptional. There's real creativity in it. It was late in the series, and they were just using the friend, the material they had to the best they could. Um, that was a good choice of countdown footage, though, him falling. I roommate. I just love this one. Did I even show the footage, like, the text there of it saying I roommate? I don't think I even did. It was, like, for a second, and it didn't fade out. Um, the footage choices are okay, as I said, though. <laughs> and yeah, just, I think we only want to pay for one uh, room or one dimension. And yeah, it's just such... I don't know, it feels such, like such an innocent episode, this one. Whenever I watch it, I'm just... Because I have watched this probably the most out of any of the episodes. I've watched this the most. Because it's just the crew feeling very human or alien or whatever it the, even in the future you know in this dystopian dystopian whatever called time they're still just sitting down watching tdv together watching something trashy you know just watching um calculon who's a terrible actor um and you know they're just trying to find a place they can crash a place they can live and call home and particularly if you've been in your uh 20s you've been probably in that situation where you're just trying to find a place you can call home and a place that's reasonably priced, that it doesn't have, you know, noise problems or, you know, is peaceful and is calm and pleasant. You don't have crappy neighbors. And it's kind of nice to see that process laughed at because I've been through that process so many times. Like, it's a new thing for me in the last two years to actually have a place I can call home that I'm happy with, that's peaceful and calm. And I'm continually so lucky for it. I'm very blessed for that. Anyway, um, yeah, I really love the episode room. It's just a charming, nice, calm, simple episode. You know, I, I pretty much watch it every time I move. Uh, Godfellas. Now, this, yeah, another one that was just, uh, it's, it's like, not, it's just a nice, simple commentary on religion and just, uh, even just uh, how we should respond to, um, you know, making our own futures and stuff and it was another one i've just watched a whole bunch of times and you know i like um this little uh thing they've got this uh what is essentially god there and uh, his kind of response to bender and how he responds to bender is really cool i just love seeing bender interact with god and what he kind of says and it's all exactly kind of what i would expect a all-powerful being of neutrality to kind of say to um bender so i thought that was very cool that was other robots um you guys probably already know but that's dan castellanetta playing robot uh, devil there and it's it's just a great role for him uh he uh it, it's wild it's um and it but it's kind of bad at the same time and you can tell he's just loving it and that's kind of the fun thing about it and i do like the little commentary of him uh 
Bender actually doing something very odd, which is becoming nice for a while, um, and actually sort of going into religion. And he goes into drugs as well, and it's just so much happens in such a short time. And excuse me, I, I love that about these, uh, you know, newer season one episodes is that uh, there's less of um, a strong topic. Like they're more timeless topics. They're not covering the times, which is what a lot of The Simpsons does nowadays. Um, it cover in the old days up to probably season 10 particularly it would cover kind of timeless topics that are always applying then we have to get into more topical recent stuff which can hit too close to home sometimes um so it can be less fun but all of season one and two particularly tends to be about topics that are kind of timeless and i like that uh and the song was really fun obviously um that was another neat thing about it is just that this was so catchy this song um, I still end up hummer, humming, gambling's wrong, and so is drinking, so is uh, making phony IOUs, it's, it's, it's all such fun. Um, <laughs> and how they respond to his drug addiction. I found religion. <laughs> and he's, You're my friend, Fry. Just uh, lots of fun interaction between Bender and... Uh, um, uh, Leela and Fry, all the, all the characters just do, uh, wonderful in it, um, <laughs> and of course that's just for starters, um, no, I'm th thoroughly a fan of that one. Uh, let's see, what was the next one? 300 Big Boys. This is another one people were sort of like, eh, they didn't really like the episode as much as me, but it's another, ex I guess I'm just a fan of the Futurama crew not really having a strong agenda or purpose, but just sort of going along and doing whatever, um, kind of just having fun. Uh, they just exist and live, and there's not a real big purpose or structure to what they do um, in episodes like this. It's, it is a bit like the 22 short films about Springfield to me. And in this case, it's kind of just interesting to see how they just spend a bit of extra cash and how they enjoy themselves. And in Bender's case, they uh, commit felonies. Um, in Leela's case, uh, you know, she... Uh, jumps in the pool with the whale and a uh, fishy bathing suit. Um, they they all just kind of interact in their different ways. And uh, it's funny how, you know, they can make something so simple just from what do they do with 300 bucks? And yeah, I, I just really like this one. It's uh, It was quite contested in terms of a lot of people said that I should have chosen another one. And that's fair enough. Um, I, there's another one, though, I've just watched so many times. Uh, I Roommate, this one, um, Hell is Other Robots. A lot of those ones I've just watched a bunch of times. This made me feel like it was back in season one or two. It was just having fun, no real strong agenda, and just watching the crew uh, interact off each other. These timeless personalities interacting off each other, which was really cool. <laughs> my commentaries were much longer, though, I've got to say. I mean, my... um. Uh, actual reviews were much longer. I try to keep it down to two minutes nowadays, but um, yeah, th this t I would go to three or four minutes for some of these. But there is so much to say about some of these future armor episodes. And look at this. This is just such a good episode. Uh, another one I've watched quite a few times. Um, it's a bit of a heavier episode, though. I mean, you are seeing the beginning and the end of time and everyone you know and love destroyed and then reappeared and destroyed over again. It's... Um, it's heavy, um, so I can't say I watch this one as much as the other ones. You know, sometimes when it's been a long day, ugh, no, I don't need that right now to feel completely insignificant in everything and everything I will ever do. I'd rather, you know, if you just enjoy some people uh, spending money today, um, 300 bucks today, and what the hell they do with it. Um, and But it is really interesting, all the different settings they get into. Um, it is kind of what I picture when I think of the future nowadays and just the far reaches. I don't, I can't think of many things outside of Doctor Who that really go this far into the future. Um, you know, we're seeing the passing of time and history then in a very cleverly done way on a, you know, keeping the animation budget in check. Um, and I just think it's beautiful what uh, Leela does. I love her, the, way, the fact that she finds the letter much later in life and it's a beautiful love story really um and i've often recalled on it um and thought wow isn't that just amazing so many years later they just thought it was the best years of their life when they were together <laughs> and here they are at the end of the universe and just you guys want to talk uh, what do you feel like doing 
I guess his uh, ship is kind of indestructible or something because everything else in the universe has been destroyed. Ah, oh, there's no crossfades in this. This is terrible. Um, well, it's not terrible, but like it's just so much more unprofessional. Um, anthology of interest one and two. Again, you could. In I guess I could have put one and two in the place of um, three hundred big boys and that one. I oh God, I can't even remember the name, but it shows how good it was. Uh, that one with the uh, really colorful settings and different uh, characters and settings. Ooh. Um, yeah, but like Anthology of Interest, though, we all know that was just a fantastic set of episodes. I was just watching this one last night. Instead of shooting where I was, you should have shot where I was going to be. And like, even if you didn't grow up with the... Because um, this is more aimed for the people who were growing up in the 80s rather than the uh, 90s. Um, still, you know, we can still enjoy it. And, you know, I did kind of cheat with saying Bender's big score because it's a, uh, it's a movie, but I can, s the movies are episodes, they're just extended episodes, that's the thing. Um, and just so much happens in this one, and I just think it's such a beautiful story as well. Uh, it's, it's again, it's putting that significance on the individual life, and I like that, but at the same time, expanding outwards and looking at the global picture but how much those individual lives can affect the future and the past. And they still are doing just doing basic trivial stuff sometimes, just on their laptops doing... Uh, and I like that when characters can kind of still be smart, but just do trivial stuff sometimes. And the fact that they get um, the Niblonians involved, uh, I think is again really cool. It just brings the whole four or five seasons at this point, it brings all the seasons up to this point together so neatly and it finishes on such a powerful note of and as many people have said uh, mainly Raz and me have said the series could have ended right here for me and I would have been okay it did not need to go on to Beast with a Billion Backs but I'll, I'll do a commentary on that later you know because that was in my worst future on the list um yeah it's uh, and the story between Leela and how she and Fry and how he kind of changes himself in the future and I love seeing the passing of time uh, and it kind of gave me a picture of when I was because I used to speculate a lot on the future when I was um, uh, younger and watching this and it did make me think oh how will I be when I'm in my 30s and that sort of stuff and well, I nearly am now but uh, probably not that different from how, who I am now but um, and it was interesting the way he became the person uh, Leela wanted uh, so much through growth in character rather than through parasites or something silly like that. It was legitimately just he needed to be four to five, ten years older in order to be the um, person Leela wanted him to be. Um, and that's really beautiful. And the story with Leelu, um, just the fact that, you know, he has to let her go. I love the... Uh, I just love futures and time travel stories. That's the thing, is that... Uh, they really connect with me. I love sort of speculating on the future and the past and seeing other people's speculations of what we become. It's just a beautiful thing. And what Fry says here, you know, I, I want to see you happy. And that's the thing. I think true love, it's maybe that it's okay to let the other person go for you because when you look at it objectively, it can still hurt. But you say, if that person is happier with that other person, then then that's good that I'm happy that they're happy. That's the most important thing is their happiness. And I don't know, um, people say love is a selfish thing, but I also think, well, you should take that into account as well. And he's got a powerful conclusion as well. Um, I love seeing Bender go into the past and uh, gonna get brainwashed and have to go on, but kind of enjoying it at the same time. And it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, Oh, just absolutely gorgeous episode, and I don't watch this one as much anymore because it is quite long and stuff, but it was a, it was a, yeah, definitely still my number one. Jeez, I didn't have much of a conclusion there, it was all done. Anyway guys, I'll uh, talk to you later.